Hey guys, it's Omer from MOS.com with another quick weekly news recap for all major MO news and announcements of the week ending May 23rd, 2016. This is episode number 44 of the recap, and the first bit of news this week is from Riders of Icarus from Nexon. Uh, big news, apparently the game is getting a female-only lolly race with an exclusive class in South Korea. This is currently only for the Korean version of the game, so no word on that yet for the Western one. Uh, the old beta for Riders of Icarus is set to begin in the West on July 6th, for those interested. Uh, this is just another reason to check the game out. And uh, we are giving away three legendary founders packs of $90 value each so make sure to enter on the giveaway at mbos.com slash giveaways if you want one of those i've uh, been excited to give uh rise of the Icarus a shot especially since it's been doing quite well in korea plus we got the lolly race to look forward to soon up next some positive news from monster hunter online team hd announced that they'll be launching an english patch for the game on may 30th as is the game is in Chinese and you do have to register a QQ account to play the game but luckily there are no IP restrictions and it's actually relatively easy to get on the game and now we can finally start playing it in English which sounds awesome but again this is a fan patch for the game it's not actually launching in English just a fan patch on uh, May 30th is the date up next, some pretty big news from S2 Games. Savage Resurrection officially launched their early access on Steam. Yes, it is a part of the Savage series of games. There was Savage 1 and Savage 2, and now we have Savage Resurrection. And for those that haven't heard of the franchise, it is a unique FPS slash RTS hybrid, and I remember I loved Savage 2, and I played it countless hours. So I am looking forward to giving uh, Savage Resurrection a try. It does cost $19.99 on Steam at the moment. And as the name suggests, it is actually a remake of the first Savage, thus the name Savage Resurrection. They took that as the base game and they continue to develop it. Expect the first look soon. Up next, a bit of news from Tryon Worlds regarding Rift. The game adds a new 10 player raid to the game called Comet of Oncot. And uh, despite its fair share of drama that Tryon Worlds has enjoyed with Rift, the game is still going and it's still doing fairly well. And now uh, the video you're seeing in the background is the official trailer for the Oncat dungeon. Up next, buy to play MRPG Black Desert Online will finally be launching its desert area on June 1st. Oddly enough, the game did not launch the desert area despite the game's name being Black Desert Online, but finally we will have it and again on June 1st, along with the Valencia Part 1 update. Uh, the update itself is said to increase the game's world size by about 30% and also introduce hundreds of new quests in the process. So yeah, it's definitely a pretty big update for the game. Up next, Bland Soul is launching an update on June 1st, which continues the game's storyline. It'll also be adding three new heroic dungeons to the game, as well as increasing the game's Howling Moon level cap to 15. Bland Soul has already enjoyed several updates since its launch in the West, which isn't a big surprise because the game's been out in South Korea for years, so I'm sure they had the release schedule for the updates planned well in advance. And again, this update itself is launching on June 1st. Up next, Bluehole Studios is hiring individuals to port Terra to consoles. So it looks like Terra is following the footsteps of several other titles, namely Neverwinter and Star Trek Online in moving to consoles. And based on the job posting, it looks like they're trying to port Terra to PS4 and Xbox One. And given that Neverwinter has done pretty well on consoles, I, I expect Terra to do quite well. I mean, the game's combat, I could imagine it working on a controller. Obviously, I prefer PC, but it could work on console. Up next in MOBA news, we have yet another free weekend for Paragon. Uh, it's from Epic Games and it is a MOBA. It'll be launching on PC and PS4. Uh, do keep, keep in mind that even though the game in early access does cost money, there is a free weekend coming up on May 26th to 30th. However, after it launches, it'll be entirely free to play. Players will also get a chance to play Grim.exe, the game's newest hero in this beta weekend. Up next in vaguely mobile related news, we have a game called Energy Heroes which is entering early access on June 1st. The game describes itself as a sci-fi first person shooter featuring, featuring comic book style characters and PvP gameplay coupled with a twist on MOBA rules. I haven't heard too much about Energy Heroes just yet but I will check it out when early access begins. Do keep in mind the early access will not be on Steam, it will be on its own website and it will be on June 1st, free to play. Up next, Moo Origin, uh, the mobile adaptation of WebZen's popular Moo Online game is set to launch on June 8th. Uh, it will be available for both iOS and Android and feature full 3D PC MRPG experience. That's uh, their words, not mine. Uh, it will feature cross-platform play as well between both mobile operating systems. I do plan on checking Moo Origin out, but from the looks of it, it looks very much like these other Chinese browser-based games that largely play themselves. But we'll see when the game actually launches and I'll check it out. Move right along, after about a year and a half of early access, Fracture Space goes free to play. It is the 5v5 space battle game, which looks a lot like Dreadnought, as it features gigantic capital, capital ships battling it out in 5v5 gameplay. I expect the first look for the game relatively soon. Up next, uh, Tran Worlds announced they launched the most substantial update that defines its economy since launch called The Exchange, which is a very fancy way of saying it's an auction house. 
Oddly enough, though, patrons will be able to get four exchange slots for free, but non-patrons for the game will have to pay for each exchange slot from the game's uh, store. Very unfortunate that trying this nickel and diming player is such a basic feature, but it looks like it will cost money. Up next, the Unreal 4 powered mobile hack and slash RPG Heroes or Incredible Tales, also known as HIT, will be launching worldwide this summer. It launched in South Korea back in November of 2015 and had over 5 million downloads since. We'll see how the game does in the West though, and I will do a first video, hopefully, relatively soon when it launches. The next and last bit of news this week comes from Final Fantasy XV about patch 3.3, which is set to launch relatively soon now. The official word is it's just around the corner. The 3.3 update introduced a new storyline called Revenge of the Horde, as well as adding two new dungeons called Sor Kai and Hullbreaker Isle to the game. Uh, also including the update is a new recommended gear feature, which will basically equip the best possible gear in the inventory for your job in class automatically for you. Simple as that. Anyway guys, that's it for MMO News this week. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the podcast. Later guys.